Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we have the Real Steel G-Frame. Now, the Real Steel G-Frame is a White Mountain Knives exclusive because they made another version and a slip joint version, but this is the frame lock version. White Mountain Knives exclusive, so you can only get it from White Mountain Knives, but it's a pretty good value here, and I've really liked this knife. Now, I did get it with a couple of issues however i've been able to work them out and i'm going to show you later on in the video how i fixed the issues i had with this knife but first let's get into this knife so we have an s35 vn blade that is very very thin the blade stock is nice and thin and the geometry is nice and thin so this thing is a fantastic slicer we'll get more into that in a second titanium frame lock and we have a reversible wire clip now, getting into the action first, before we get into ergos and cutting, the action is really snappy. It has beautiful jimping on the flipper tab, and the detent is nice and crisp. I thought it was light at first when I first got it, but after working out one of the issues I had, it completely changed after putting it back together. So, very, <laughs> as I do that, <laughs> very snappy detent. Good access to the lock bar, and you can push button it, but it's more of a light switcher. That's what it kind of prefers, but you can push button it, but it's a little bit pokey, so it prefers a light switch. Now, good access to the lock bar, and the detent is relatively early, and you can let it drop down to your finger, and then it's not fall shut or drop. I mean, I guess it's kind of drop shutty, but, you know, you do have to give it some influence. But it's very smooth. It is riding on ceramic caged bearings. But if you just let it drop, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, you have to give it a bunch of shakes. However, it's very smooth. And if I really shake it, it'll just drop. So no issues. I like it. And the ergos, the er oh yeah, and the D10, man, it's so snappy when you open it. I love that. The ergos are, it's a thin, compact knife, and that's kind of the beauty of it, is that it's such a lightweight EDC knife, but yet you have a full-size knife on you that's super slicey. Now, the ergos are not supposed to be maximum amount of leverage type ergos. This is a slim EDC. So, I appreciate the ergos. It's nice and slim in the hand, easy to carry, easy to use, nice and comfortable, you know, considering the type of knife it is. And considering how good this blade slices, man, the ergos are great because this blade is so slicey. It just passes through everything you throw at it. I mean, like nothing. It's like 15 thousandths behind the edge. And that's after sharpening it a couple times. I put a couple edges on it. Now, the plunge grind is beautiful too. Great plunge grind. And what I'm showing here is this line right here. That's the end of the plunge grind. And you see how it separates from there to the top of the edge bevel. They gave us a little distance. And this is after sharpening it twice. So they gave you plenty of room to sharpen it without hitting the plunge grind. And... And with use, you know, it's a great blade shape. So slicing works really good. Push cuts work really good. You know, as long as you're not going through anything crazy dense. I did bring it to work and it worked out great. I used it as a knife for cutting straps and cutting boxes and breaking down cardboard. And it worked so good. I was really happy to carry it. I actually wanted to carry it multiple days, but I had to test other knives. But I've noticed this thing has not wanted to get out of my pocket. <laughs> It's been really, really good. Now, with the um, the blade, it also has a, a beautiful satin finish on it, as long as it doesn't get all fingerprinty like it does. That is one of the issues, but it does have a nice satin finish on it. It looks really good. Now, with um, utility cuts, it does do utility cuts pretty good, even though, you know, it's not the... the farthest dropping point you know it does have quite a bit of belly but you can do utility cuts very easily the compact handle really makes where you can push it right into your palm or you can you know lay your hand or lay it right underneath your palm and really get in close for utility cuts but utility cuts slicing push cuts they all were great geometry cuts that's what it is geometry cuts and this is a, a very good uh, blade and grind. It is a flat grind, but very slicey flat grind. Now, the clip and carry. 
I mean, it's so lightweight, so easy to carry. It is a dream to carry. It made me want to carry it. When I had a bunch of knives laying on the table and I kept trying to decide what am I going to carry, I kept wanting to carry this. I couldn't get it out of my pocket. I had literally had to convince myself, you have to carry other knives because I did not want to take it out of my pocket. The clip works so good in and out of the pocket. And, you know, as slim as it is, it just... It's so easy to carry and you always have a full size knife on you that just slices so good. So uh, the clip is great. The clip, you know, and wire clips are like the best kind of working clips. Now it does have a little issue. We'll talk about the hair in a second, but it is a reversible pocket clip. So even lefties are involved on this. So that's awesome. Now, if we get into some of the issues we I had with it, well, one issue I had with it is the clip. The clip moves back and forth. Now, pretty bad too. It's very easy. And that winds up scratching the surface of the knife. Now in the hand, when you go to grip it, you can feel it kind of move a little bit. So that can be a little annoying. It's not that big of a deal. I just kind of put pressure on it instead of gripping it like this. I put pressure on it and it works just fine, but it does move and it will scratch the surface. Next thing was when I first got it, it was off-centered really bad. Now, I don't think that they sent it out of their factory like that. I'm pretty sure it probably just happened from expansion or something because when I got it, it was really off. And even the action was pretty bad. Not bad, but I felt like it should be smoother. So all I did was I took it apart and put it back together. That was it. Took the scale off, put it back together, and it went right to centered right to center like nothing like it, so i'm pretty sure it was just expansion because that's usually how you know when you take it apart and put it back together and it you know winds up lining up and everything's fine most likely that was the issue so that was a very easy fix not a big deal and it is nice and centered now the action is very smooth it's not like it was it did feel pretty stiff before so very nice now now my worst issue with it was I it had lock rock real lock rock where if you put pressure on the back of the spine the 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 lock rocks back and forth it has lock slip basically it doesn't slip because it did it wouldn't fail so if it failed that would just be lock slipping but it slipped a, it would slip a little bit it would rock back and forth like this when I would put pressure on the spine now how did I fix that so well that's different than um blade rock so blade rock would be like me going like this and my blade starts rocking back and forth or you know you could even call it blade play towards the lock now blade regular blade play side regular blade play side to side you just tighten the pivot and if it, if it doesn't go away there's not much you can do but um usually you can make that go away just by tightening the pivot now if it did have blade rock where it would rock back and forth or, you know, blade play towards the, the lock, I would test it by putting pressure on the lock bar and see if it goes away. If it goes away, then all you have to do is strengthen the lock bar a little bit and it should be, should go right away. However, my problem was, was lock rock. So where it would slip if I put pressure. Now, the way I fixed it was I took it apart and, um, I, took the the where the lock face where the lock bar insert touches the the tang of the blade so right there where you see that little spot right there where the lock engages on the blade I took that and I took some sandpaper right around 300 grit and I just scuffed it a little bit. I think it was between like 300 and 600 grit sandpaper. And I don't want to remove steel. All I want to do is just scuff it up. Because what's happening is the lock bar is slipping. So it's slippery right there. So what I'm trying to do is create a little bit of texture right there so it stops it from slipping. And it doesn't take much. You just scuff the area up. A lot of times you can see a shiny area. But regardless, you just scuff up the area right where the lock bar lands. Now... After that, I also hit the steel lock bar insert a couple times because I noticed there was a shiny spot on the top of the steel lock bar insert. So I scuffed that area up just a little bit. I don't think I recorded it to show you guys it, but I did do that. And now it is really good. 
it, there's a tiny, tiny bit if I really crank down, but before all I would do is just put a little bit of pressure and it would move. You see how it's not moving? I'm putting pretty good pressure right now. And if I go up the blade, it's still good, still good. It doesn't start doing it until I get to the very top and I really crank down. Well, if I really crank, come on. There we go. It takes a lot of effort though. So that is way better than it was before i would literally just touch it and go like this and it would it would move the lock bar would be moving all over the place so that is a win for me because there's no way i'm ever gonna baton with this or put this through so much pressure that that's gonna be a big deal and in all reality, I put pressure on the lock bar when I use it anyways, but it has no chance of failing as long as I use it appropriately. Now, and I have no intention on ever hard using this knife. It's just not a hard use knife. So that little tiny bit that I can really struggle to make it move doesn't mean anything to me. So I don't even care. And it doesn't really, I mean, you really got to crank on it to do it too. And it's pretty much gone. But and also, with time, it'll probably just fully go away after a bunch of deployments and the lock bar really settles in place. Now, also, when I took it apart, I noticed that only one, it only had a one-sided stop pin. So it's an internal stop pin, but the stop pin is only on one side. So, you know, I found that interesting. I know it's a light-duty knife. You can see the stop pin moving back and forth right there. It is connected to the blade. But I found that interesting that it was only one side. Um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'd prefer a two-sided stop pin, you know, especially with an internal stop pin. But, you know, not that big of a deal. Like I said, it is more of a light-duty knife. So not that big of a deal. Now, also sharpening it. When I sharpened it, the first edge I put on didn't go so well. It really didn't get that sharp. Um, I was not impressed with it. I actually was um, pretty upset like and confused. Not really confused because I've had this happen before and I know sometimes there's burnt edges, but I was really hoping it wasn't a soft heat treat. So I wound up resharpening it again and the second edge went well. The second edge went good. I put a medium grit right around 600 grit edge on there and it's really nice now, but you know, that first edge, um, it just, it was not sharp. It did not feel sharp at all. Now I normally like to go around 600 grit with S35 VN. S35 VN, in my opinion, likes a medium grit edge. It just, you know, with a high grit, it can be slick. And even if right after sharpening, it's not after using it, it does get slick. So I prefer it at uh, a medium grit so that it keeps the bite on the edge longer term and you know and then it, it seems like it's more responsive to straps and for a longer period so but yeah so i i did it at 600 grit and everything went well the second time around just that first time just did not go so well but other than those those issues which i know people probably think those are significant issues but I fixed them very easily, so and I like the knife so much that I, I I'm okay with with those little issues. It was an affordable knife for the most part, and I like it so much, so I really don't care. I love this knife. Like I said, it's literally a knife I gravitate towards and want to put in my pocket. But the the blade um, finish is fingerprinty. That is another thing. Um, and you know, other than those things, oh, T6s. Oh, my next thing, T6 pivot. You know, the slip joint version has a T8 pivot. This has a T6 pivot. What were they thinking? I don't know. I don't know why they would do that, but that is a T6 pivot. And that's, that's crazy to me that they did that, but it does, um, go, you know, take, it does come apart and go back together very easily. The hardware seems like good quality hardware. It's just it is T6s. But all you got to do is take that screw out, take this screw out, comes right apart, no issues. Um, and it is an awesome little knife. So there you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.